Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, I was a little late to collecting for the Nintendo Wii U. I didn't jump in until Nintendo actually discontinued the system, which is a bit of a shame because now that I own it and I play games on it, I know just how great the console is and how much fun those games are. So in this video, I'm gonna show you which games I have in my collection because, well, like I said, so many of them are still fun to play today and they're often really cheap. Let's take a look. All right, guys, now before we get started here, I do wanna mention that I'm gonna go fairly quick through these games because we do have 36 titles to get through. Now, I typically don't go for complete game collections, but for the Wii U, there are only 162 games total that were released physically, so it is possible to do. But if you don't see a game in this video that you think I should add to my collection, whether it's first party or third party, if you think it plays really well on the Wii U, let me know, I'd love to check it out. Now the first game here is kind of unusual because it's Axiom Verge and it's on the Wii U. This is the Multiverse Edition and this was released by Limited Run and my copy actually isn't opened and the reason for that is quite frankly because I already have this in other formats on other systems but this is definitely a really cool one because in addition to having the physical game it also has a Blu-ray documentary, it has a poster, it has artwork. Um, yeah, it's a really cool edition that Limited Run released. And then here are a couple third-party games, including, of course, Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, which just happens to be one of my favorites in that series, and then, of course, Batman Arkham City. Here are two Call of Duty games that I have on the Wii U. Of course, we have Ghosts, and then we have Black Ops 2. Now, the reason why I have these in my collection, honestly, is because they were donated to me by a guy named Marin, and uh, the truth is, I actually like the single player campaigns in the Call of Duty games. I don't care about multiplayer, I will never play it. I know people love it, but for me, I love the short about four to five hour campaigns in the Call of Duty games and uh, yeah, these are really cool. Here is Bayonetta 2 and for a time this was kind of difficult to find and the reason why it was so sought after as you can see here is because the original Bayonetta was ported over and included as well, which is very cool. Now, obviously Bayonetta 2 has since been ported over to the Switch, but I don't think the original Bayonetta has been ported to the Switch, has it? I don't think so. Here is Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, and for a long time, this was one of my all-time favorite games on the Wii U. Thankfully, this has also been ported over to the Switch, so fantastic game. If you haven't played it, definitely check it out. And here we have Deus Ex Human Revolution Director's Cut, and I absolutely love the new Deus Ex games. I think they're fantastic, and the Wii U version is cool because it uses the the control pad, the second screen in really cool ways. Oh boy, here's a controversial one. So this is Devil's Third, and on consoles, this only came out on the Wii U, and this has got a bit of history to it. So first of all, this is a completely over-the-top, ultra-violent third-person action shooter game that uh, as I was capturing the footage, I was laughing my ass off. It's actually, it's, it's bad but it's also surprisingly fun. And for a time, it was very hard to find copies of this. Now, I don't know how difficult it is anymore, especially since GameStop is still technically taking in and selling Wii U games, but I know for a while it was one of the more collectible games on the Wii U. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze originally was a Wii U exclusive. Thankfully, Nintendo has brought this out on the Switch because it is a really fun, but pretty difficult 2D platforming game. If you haven't tried it, definitely check it out. Here's an interesting one that has uh, shot up in price recently, and that's because it got taken down from digital stores, and that of course is DuckTales Remastered. This is the Wii U version right here. Um, this also came out on other consoles at the time, I believe the PlayStation 3, maybe the Xbox 360, but uh, the Wii U version was one I just happened to walk into a GameStop and see on the shelves and bought, and I'm really glad I did because, again, the game has been removed from most digital stores, so it's cool having a physical version of it. 
another Wii U exclusive here that I don't know if it's gonna get a port to the Switch because it uses the second pad a lot. So it basically uses two screens almost all the time. But of course that is Game and & Wario and a lot of people love this version. So if you have a Wii U, well, you should definitely check this out. Here's another one that is exclusive to the Wii U. This is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. And this one also uses the touchpad a lot. You have to use the touchpad because essentially you are drawing a rainbow and then Kirby follows it. And it's, uh, again, it's very touch heavy. Now they could probably do it on the Switch, but uh, you know, as of the making of this video, they haven't. And then here is a total surprise. This is the Legend of K Anniversary. And the reason why this was a surprise is because for a long time, most people didn't know about this game at all. It actually came out on the PlayStation 2 era, but got kind of lost in the shuffle of all those third person platforming games. And I was really happy to see that they brought this back on the Wii U. And it's also on some other consoles as well. But again, the Wii U version was so unusual to see. I just had to pick it up. It's a really cool game. Okay, it wouldn't be a Nintendo console without some Legend of Zelda games on it, and the Wii U got three of them. You see uh, the first two right here. These are HD remasters of some classics, including Twilight Princess, and then you also have Wind Waker. And these were really cool, again, to get in physical form. And then people forget that the Breath of the Wild came out also on the Wii U. I think they forget because it's kind of considered to be a Switch game and rightfully so because I think a lot of people bought the Switch because of Breath of the Wild, but if you happen to have a Wii U, you can also get it there and it looks and plays fantastic. Lego City Undercover. This was one of the first games I bought on my Switch and it's because it was a Wii U port of a Lego game and I actually really like the Lego games. This one is an open world game and uh, I believe, I'm trying to think it's all original. I think technically it's, you know, it's not based on a movie or, you know, any sort of property like that. And I actually beat it on Switch, fantastic game. And of course the Wii U version is great too. This is Mario Kart 8. And some would argue that this is one of the best Mario Kart games ever made. I'm not gonna argue with that, but when they did bring it over to Switch, they made it just that much better. Such a great game. Need for Speed Most Wanted You is a really interesting one. I've talked about it on my channel before, and the reason why it's kind of unusual is that it is technically the best looking version, on consoles at least, of this Need for Speed game, which just happens to be one of my favorites. It's a, it's a really well-designed one, but the reason why the Wii U one is so sought after is because it technically uses the PC textures, so the Wii U had a little bit more RAM, and this game took advantage of that. Also, it has some really cool features that use the uh, the touch screen. Here's a fun game that came out for the Wii U, and that is the NES Remix Pack. And basically what Nintendo did was took all these classic NES games and then just mixed them up in really interesting and creative ways. This also came out on the 3DS and that's also a really good version. Now, I don't think they've released this in a form on the Switch, have they? At least something that I haven't seen. So if I'm missing something, let me know down in the comments below. New Super Luigi U. Now the thing that stands out for me with this Obviously, it's a really fun game. This came out the year of Luigi, but I love its green case. I believe it's the only green case that was released on the Wii U. I could be wrong about that, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool to have that physical version. And then of course, Nintendo Land, which was designed to be kind of like a demo for the Wii U to show off a lot of its different functionality. And uh, yeah, I've played through some of this. I think it's better as a party game, but it's uh, you know still cool. Paper Mario Color Splash, another game that is currently, as of the making of this video, still exclusive to the Wii U. And then Pikmin 3, which still is one of my all time favorite games on the Wii U. This game is so much fun. Oh my God, it's a real time strategy game where you control these Pikmin, which are space aliens that have different functionality depending on their color. But when I first played this game, I was blown away by the graphics and just how kind of realistic they looked. It's such a great game, so much fun, so much personality. 
Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. I still think this is one of my favorite arcade racing games of the last couple years. It's still so much fun. It's created by Sumo Digital. They made the excellent reboots of the OutRun series, and they just bring all that knowledge to this game. It's a masterpiece. I love this game. The original Splatoon came out on the Wii U, although I think most people would agree that the sequel, Splatoon 2, on the Switch is technically the better game. I think more people played it there, myself included. Here's a really interesting one that I don't think came out on other systems, and I could be wrong about that, but on the Wii U, we got this collection of SteamWorld Heist as well as SteamWorld Dig. These were originally download-only indie games, but they were extremely popular, and so I'm glad they put them on a physical disc here. Oh yeah, I love this game. So Super Mario 3D World. I've actually played through this twice now. It's a fantastic 3D Mario game. Um, it's hard to say if you really need to go and play this now that you know Mario Odyssey is out on the Switch, but this is a really well-made game. It's fantastic. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Um, yeah, I gotta admit that I don't actually know much about this game. I don't really play this series very much, and this particular one, I think I played for maybe an hour against Kelsey, and she utterly destroyed me. <laughs> we had a good time, though. Here is Tank Tank Tank, and I believe this is still an exclusive to the Wii U. Although it is a port of an arcade game, I've actually played the arcade version, and like the title suggests, you are in a tank and you're basically just trying to blow everything up. Uh, you are taking out these giant monsters that are stomping around the cityscape. It's cool because you can actually take out buildings. It reminds me a little bit of EDF. If you played uh, Earth Defense Force, especially some of the more modern versions of that, it's very arcadey, kind of grindy, you know, a little bit on the simple side. But, uh, you know, if you're hanging out with your buddy on a Saturday night, sitting on the couch, drinking some beers, this is good for a couple laughs. Here is an RPG that was originally exclusive to the Wii U, but recently got announced that's gonna be brought over to the Switch, and a lot of people are really excited about that. This is Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE. And as you can see by the gameplay footage, this is very much a classic Japanese RPG, beautiful graphics. At the time when this was released, a lot of people were using this game and a few others to basically say, this is why you want to own a Wii U. And so getting a port over to the Switch, I think is going to be a very good thing because a lot more people will be exposed to it. Xenoblade Chronicles X is another Wii U exclusive, at least currently. Now, what's really interesting about this game is that it is just absolutely epic. And we're talking, <laughs> We're talking like Skyrim level epic. If you wanna do everything possible in this game, you are gonna put in 200 to 300 hours. It's insanity. I don't even think they make RPGs this big anymore, but if you have a Wii U and you're into that sort of stuff, definitely check it out. Oh, I am a total sucker for the Yoshi games and Yoshi's Woolly World on the Wii U was a really fun game. I love its knitted kind of yarn style to the graphics. Also, the other thing I really like with the Yoshi games is that they're a little bit more on the casual side, so they're not quite as hardcore as some of the other Nintendo franchises. Here's another game that a lot of people would like to see brought over to the Switch and exposed to a larger audience, including the developer of Platinum Games. And that, of course, is the wonderful 101, uh, another Wii U exclusive. Very unusual, really cool looking game. Um, I didn't get very far in it, but I know people absolutely love this title. I remember when the Wii U first launched and Zombie U was pushed really hard as a great game to play on it. I haven't played it unfortunately, but I know people like it. It's a first person survival horror game. And since the, the release of it, it's now come out on other systems as well. All right, guys, well, that's a quick look at the Wii U games that I have in my collection. And like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I am very interested to learn from you what games you think I should add. I definitely want to take advantage of the fact that GameStop is still selling Wii U games in their stores, and often they are dirt cheap. So let me know down in the comments below. All right, guys, as always, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you very much for subscribing and take care.